Ahoy, mateys. <clears throat> so, what are we going to talk about today? First, let me open that blind a little bit, maybe get rid of some of that. Is it not coming through that one? That's not helping. Maybe this one? Let's see, does that make it better or worse? Let's close that and see if that does it. Yeah, I think that'll work. All right, what are we going to do? We're going to talk about phones today. So I was talking the other day about, uh, you know, what phone should I get? Because well, I just upgrade every year anyway. But also the uh, the iPhone 14 Pro. I, you know, I have the 13 Pro. Phenomenal phone. Great phone. Took great videos. Really enjoyed it, having it for a year. But I was ready for something different. And um, I also needed something with a better keyboard. It was a little bit bigger. Um, just the, the 13 Pro, you know, I have to go to like a Max or something. So that got me thinking, do I want to spend that kind of money on a Pro Max, knowing it's basically just a slightly bigger, minutely faster version of the phone I already had, or do I want to get something different? And I, I have been gravitating towards the Pixels, you know, wanting the pure Android experience. Um, but it doesn't, uh, the Pixel 7 doesn't look any different than the Pixel 6. And that got me to the bigger issue, and that is... Um, there's not been any phone innovation in years. When I say years, I don't mean two years. I mean like five, six, seven, eight years. They're all rectangles. They all have basically the same cameras. They all have basically the same processing power. And I know the Apple fans are going to go, well, in benchmarks, the, the Bionic 16 blows away. It doesn't. It, yeah, it gets higher synthetic benchmark scores. Does it make your phone open faster? Does it make watching Netflix faster? Does it make you text faster? Does it make watching a video faster? No. Maybe in some games, it's marginally faster. If I'm playing video games, I'm playing it on a 42-inch screen on a, on a dedicated gaming PC. I, I don't need a phone for that. And, and honestly, the flagship Android phones are nearly as fast. So there really isn't anything in the real world that a synthetic benchmark translates to. So they're all the same. They're all the same you know, range of sizes. They're all just bricks. They're a rectangle. There's nothing new or interesting or innovative in phones in well over half a decade. Except maybe something like this. And this is why I went to this. So I wanted something that would be um, different. Something that just offered me a different experience. Yes, it has the same email. It has all the same, you know, apps. I can go in and, and start up my car and, and, you know, do all that kind of stuff. You know, I, I've got all that stuff, right? So having my photos, having my, my you know, uh, using it as a phone, using it for Uber, everything else is the same as far as the software goes. It doesn't do anything. There's a couple things it does that an iPhone doesn't do. One of those is being able to just plug this into a USB port and just seamlessly drag and drop files. I mean, it's like having a thumb drive, okay? Um, carrying this around in your pocket, or I've got a rocket here. It's a one terabyte SSD that I can just plug in and I use this to back up my gaming computer yesterday. You know, okay, well, why don't I want to carry these around in my pocket if I'm already carrying this, right? And so that's one of the big differences with an iPhone and this is that I can just plug this into my MacBook. I can plug this in through USB-C to my Windows desktop, to a Linux box, any anything. And it'll just see it as a thumb drive. And I can just drag and drop copies and of music, of work files and PDFs, anything I want. I can just go in through you know Explorer or whatever file manager you're using on your laptop or desktop. And I can go in there and I can create a folder called work and just start dragging and dropping all my work stuff into it. And then I go to someone else's computer and I can plug in and drag it and drop it to their desktop when I get to the office or something. So it, it, it's it's a really cool to be able to do that. Um, the one thing that I felt like I was going to give up from the uh, from um, from going from you know was iMessage, and I don't care about iMessage is an app. It sends texts, it sends pictures. I don't care about emojis and all that crap. I'm not a 13 year old girl. Um, and blue bubbles versus green bubbles. It doesn't matter. It's the same freaking thing. It's all marketing bullshit. What was nice was when people would text me, I'd have my MacBook open and I could just text from there. Well, you can do the same thing here. You can sync if you're using, 
your 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 uh, my, uh, the Google version of your your texts and stuff like that, I can come in here and I can mirror this on my desktop, on my MacBook, on my Android tablet. I've got a, somewhere around here a Galaxy tablet. So I actually have this, all of this included on my MacBook, whereas on my MacBook, I could only have, you know, with iMessage, I can only do it between Apple devices. So this actually gives me a step up from what I had. Um, you know, the screen is, is beautiful. It's 120 hertz. Um, it's adaptive fresh rate. The colors just pop. It's gorgeous. It's, I mean, it, it's just kind of neat using a phone <laughs> with, a, with a flexible screen like that. And I'll tell you where the flexible screen really comes into play. Couple things. So if I'm using the camera and I want to do a video, all right, so I'm using the camera. See how that turns into a camcorder? This ergonomically is really nice to have all my controls here and then all my filming is over here. Also, once I start recording, I have a pause button. I can pause a recording, wait for the person who's about to photo bombing that I saw coming out of the corner of my eye, I pause it, wait for them to pass, and then unpause it all in the same video. And I can do that multiple times. Can't do that on an iPhone. You'll have to sit there and start and stop and start and stop. And then you're going to have to either go into iMovie and try to stitch them all together and reprocess and save it and then upload it. Or I got to airdrop it over to my MacBook to stitch it all together and, and then send it over. Um, so it's all kinds of extra steps with Apple. Whereas here, I can pause it and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, also, using it in vertical mode. So if I want to sit here and do, you know, a video of me, I don't have to. You see in the thing here, I've got my Insta360 doing the recording. I have to have this kind of little setup here, Jerry rigged up. But if I want to do blogging or, or vlogging or something here, I have all my controls. I can come in, change my resolution, go to 4K60. I can go in and change the panorama. I mean, I can do all the things that I want to do here. And I can angle this however I want. I can use the front camera. I can use the back camera. So if I have something right here I want to show, I can do that. If I want to set this up on a park bench or something like that, I can angle this. When you think about being in a Zoom meeting, right? You're in a Zoom meeting and you're trying to hold it like this because if you hold it over here, then you're like, oh, you're covering up the, 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 the camera. So I want to cover, I want to hold the thing here and I'm trying to prop it up on something and, you know, it slips and falls off unless it's something sturdy that'll hold it. And hopefully that, you know, your case has enough grip so that it doesn't slide. Or I can do this <laughs> and just have hands free and I could be doing something else and, and have this without a tripod. Like there's a lot of really cool things about this form factor that lets you do neat things like that. You've got an outside screen. I mean, look how small this thing folds up. This thing fits right in your pocket. I mean, it, I don't know, just as a size comparison, I've got my Kershaw Blur, really nice assisted opening knife with the new titanium clip, deep carry pocket clip. But I've got this, you know, I mean, I don't know, as a frame of reference, I mean, the, my smallest handgun that I carry is, you know, considerably bigger than the phone. Whereas normally if you have an iPhone Pro Max or something, you know, it's going to be this big in your pocket. Now the iPhone Pro Max isn't quite as tall, but it's wider. But it, you know, when you get up to phones that size, they're size they're massive, and so this oftentimes, depending on what kind of shorts you're wearing, could be you know having this much of it almost sticking out of your pocket. If it's in your back pocket, it's absolutely sticking out, which means it's likely to get caught on something or snagged or scratched or or fall out when you sit on the couch in your shorts. It doesn't weigh. It actually weighs a little bit less than my wife's iPhone 13 Pro Max, not by much. I've got this external screen, so I can come in here and I can see different messages. I can come in here and see, uh, you know, my musical tracks. If I want to come in and see what the weather is, or I can add more widgets and things like that. If I want to double click on the power, now I've got photo, or maybe I don't want photo. Maybe I want portrait mode. Maybe I want video. I can swipe over to video. I can zoom in. I can zoom out. What's nice about this is using as a selfie cam. It's like how easy this sits in my hand. Normally, when you use a selfie cam, you're using the the. Oh no, it's actually recording now. Eh, I didn't need that. Some hand gesture to stop that. <laughs> I'll have to figure out what that is. That's also nice. I can sit there and zoom in and out um, while it's recording. So, anyway, 
So what I've got here is what you can do is uh, one of the things when you're in picture mode, right? Photo, if you do that, snaps a pic. It, you do that open and close your hand and it starts a two second timer to take a, to take a selfie. And you get the preview because you can sit here and see what it is you're doing. You're also using the back cameras, which are the good cameras, right? Those are the cameras that you typically want to use. Normally you're using the smaller, lower quality camera here um, that is in the, you know, that you're, you'd be using your little punch hole camera and then trying to hold it and do anything, you know, with that. Whereas I could, you know, do this and set it up and do it like that or, you know, whatever I want to do. And what's also nice is when you are, when it is open. So when, say, when you go in here to the camera and you say, hey, I want to do a video. And somewhere in here is, uh, where is it? Motion photo on. So, oop, what was that? Where'd it go? I'm still learning this thing, so bear with me. So when you come in here, when you do, when you when you close it and put it into this mode, what you can do is move this around and have your controls down here. This is also really nice when you've got um, when you're opening up a photo editor and you use this as a trackpad to go in and draw like a little mini laptop. Um. There is a way for you to turn this on where you can put it in the bottom part, put it in the top part, and somewhere, that's auto framing. I'm still learning the controls, I apologize. Um, but there was a button somewhere where what I can do is, um, when you have this, you can transfer the preview so you can use the cameras here. So if I'm taking a picture of somebody like this, oh, maybe that's because I have to be in the, okay, all right. I know what we're doing. All right, so I'm looking at a photo. I'm looking at the desktop. What I can do is turn on the cover screen preview, okay? So I'm looking at, let's just imagine this is a person standing in front of me. I want to take a picture of them. They get to see a preview on the outside so they can strike their pose or do whatever. So they have a preview of what it looks like. And then on that one, I think because it's not technically selfie mode, it won't do the gesture. I'm the one controlling it because I'm taking the picture on this side, but I'm looking at them and they're seeing themselves. So they get a preview and can say, oh, I'm out of shot or let me center myself or whatever. I don't have to tell them, okay, move three inches to the left. Okay, smile, look up a little. Lots of cool little things like that. Same thing with video. I can turn on that preview so that I'm looking, oh, and of course my hand would hit that as I'm going through this. Turn that on. I'm seeing it here. But if they were on the other side looking back at the camera, they were that object, they see themselves and how they're being recorded and they can adjust and you know do whatever they want for the camera. A lot of cool things. You can't do that on any other phone. There's no other phone in the market that does that unless it's got that back screen uh, there. Um, it's a just a really neat screen. The, the graphics on it are, are amazing looking. When you change your wallpaper and do stuff, it actually then asks you and says, hey, you know, do you want us to take a color palette from your wallpaper? So you don't have green, but then you got red else somewhere else. So it looks at the range of colors for this and says, okay, this is kind of the average. And it gave me the choices. I could have picked any of the color palettes. I just picked the middle one. And so that applies that to like a lot of my system settings. So it's a really cool it's a really cool way of doing things so i am in love with this phone so far um being able to just do all the things i want with a big ass phone watching videos on this thing in widescreen is freaking awesome because it's a true widescreen experience you've got speakers on either end and because it's longer a little bit which makes it look a little off at first the space, you know, especially when you got Dolby Atmos turned on in here, which I think is another thing Apple doesn't have. Um, but between having the speakers, the further apart, the more the stereo separation comes into play. So it really makes this, the the audio pop. It's not going to pick up on this camera, so I'm, I'm not going to bother doing that. But it's a, it's a great thing. And that's another thing here is, you know, with Apple, you can go into different modes when you're in text. But if you're watching a movie and you have to jump out and get something else, on Apple, it reverses it back. So you're constantly having to do this. Then you go back to your movie. Then you go back to, to an email. Then you go back to this. Here, I can do split screen. I, you can do all kinds of stuff. But the landscape mode applies to the whole thing. 
So if I want to pull this down and go into settings and, you know, I don't have to change my orientation of the phone to accommodate. Every, if, it, if, I t if I tilt the phone in landscape mode, then everything on the phone is in landscape mode. The whole UI reorders itself to take advantage of that. There's a lot of cool things here. I mean, you can turn on gestures. You've got the ability to enable themes. So yeah, you can change wallpapers and things like that, but your icon packs, your fonts, how big do you want the icons to be? Do you want a script font? Do you want it bold? Do you want to change the color of the fonts? I mean, all this stuff can be done on Android. And this is just included in the stock Galaxy stuff. That doesn't even include going into um, a, whatchamacallit, uh, you know, going into like a different launcher, which that 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 that's a whole nother layer. Right now, this is using One UI from Samsung. But unlike Apple, there's a separation between the underlying operating system and then your GUI, your, your, your graphical user interface. Here, you have the stock, you know, what comes with the phone, but I could install any of like 50 different launchers that radically change the menu systems and how the system works. The underlying Android operating system is still there, you know, which is basically based off of Linux. Um, but you can change the entire interface that allows you to interface with the hardware, which will change how the, all the animations, how the system works, how you want to lay things out, the different types of widgets and things like that. Being able to go in and just add... You know, iOS 16 has added a bunch of extra widgets, but the level that you can go through here and each one of these might have multiple widgets and you can actually resize and rescale them and one can be dark and you can make it translucent. The next one can be a dark theme. Like you have individual control over all of these things. That's more about Android, less about this. Um, this, what I love is just the damn form factor. Being able to just close that, it's solid. This feels like quality. I mean, could you snap it? Yeah, but if you did that and put that much pressure on it to break this, you would have already cracked your Galaxy S22 or your iPhone or Pixel. You would have shattered that screen anyway. So this is a really nice and robust. Samsung rates it for 200,000 openings before you should see any issues. The only thing is make sure you don't have a pebble in there and then close it on that. That kind of stuff could. Oh, we can change dynamic lock screens apparently. I can change the wallpapers on the external screen. But it really is about the form factor. Being able to take this and have that take up so little space in my pocket, yeah, it's a little thicker, but you know what? I've seen some of the uh, Max iPhones with the OtterBox on them, and it's not much, thick, not much thinner than that. The only difference is they're literally twice as big. I showed this to my wife, and she was like, oh, I could slip that so easily right into a little, in one of my small pocketbooks. Whereas the or she's got the 13 Max and it takes up like half the damn purse. So if that little bit of extra thickness you're dealing with, you cut the rest of the size literally in half. And then you got this little portable like movie studio where you can go in and do your recording with these cameras, see previews here, answer things without even answer, you know, and advance your music, see your schedule, reply to a text without even having to go in and, and, and do anything with, uh, you know, open the phone. Um, Android Auto works amazing. Um, I'm just, I'm loving this thing. This is a really, really cool setup. I can go just download a movie or make a movie of my dog running by on the yard. I can make that the dynamic wallpaper. So you got your always on display, then you double click it and you get into all the other stuff. But I can have the dog just running by in a loop. Like, that's kind of cool. And you can say, oh, who needs that? Eh. If it's there, I'm going to use it. I wouldn't say that would be a reason to go buy the phone. The reason to buy the phone is because it's wicked fast. It's It's got an amazing screen. But this form factor, being able to just prop it up and boom, do a Zoom meeting and not have to sit there and try to prop it up and have it fall or, oh, my hand's getting tired after holding this for 40 minutes. Let me switch. Oh, shit. Now I'm covering the microphone. Now I got to go like this and try to do something else one-handed or whatever. Prop it up. Angle it at you like you do with your laptop except you don't have to carry around a laptop. When you want to edit a photo, you get a touchpad and you can go in and touch stuff up. You could have uh, something going on up here. I could literally be having uh, my Zoom meeting up top and the bottom could be Fox News scrolling by or texting people down here. Hands, well, hands-free I'm typing, but I'm not having to hold the phone and try to do two things at once or having to text on one device and do the Zoom meeting on the other. 
I could do it all on one screen. I can split the screen in half and say, there's my meeting. I see what they're showing. They see me. And down here, I'm typing out a text to my buddy about, hey, let's go riding after work. How cool is that? So anyway, that is why I went with this phone. It's a really cool device. We'll see how it holds up over time. I've just got a, a small uh, case on it now. I've got a couple coming tomorrow that are a little heavier. One's more of a leather, a little more premium feel, kind of like the leatherish one that I had on my iPhone 13 Pro. But I mean, that, even this is the little iPhone too, but look how much space that would take up in my pocket. The Pro Max would be up to here, like out to here. It's noticeably bigger. This thing takes up would take up less than half the space in my pocket than a Pro Max. Yet when I open it up, I've got the whole damn screen. I've got just the same amount of screen real estate. It's awesome. It's very cool. Love that 120 hertz display. And man, the colors pop on this thing. I'm very impressed with this phone so far. So anyway, that's the update on the phone front. We'll do a review of some of the new cases, see if I find one that kind of rises to the top. For this screen, oh, another thing I mentioned before, you know, the only thing about this screen is don't, you know, put a pebble on it. But when you close this, that screen is now protected as long as you don't have a rock in there. Um, it is water resistant, although not dust resistant, but I've never had a problem with dust. Just blow it out with a can of air. Um, but it will keep water out. So if I get stuck in the rain or drop it in the pool for 20 seconds, it'll be fine. And then I've got the tempered steel. Uh, it's tempered steel. <laughs> tempered glass covers over the outside screen. Picked them off of Amazon for like nine bucks. So I've got that protected from scratches. And if it does, I just peel it off and throw another one on. Same thing for the cameras. The cameras are actually protected by a stick-on that's got tempered glass. That'll protect those as well. USB-C, awesome. It's it's a really cool phone, man. And it, and like I said, it's it's the first phone in forever that was like, it, that's different. Someone thinking outside the box. That crease goes away, by the way. People say, oh, we got the crease in the middle. Yeah, but when you're watching the video, you don't even notice it. You only see it when you get the light shining at an angle, and especially if the screen's off, then of course you're going to see it. I don't know. We'll see if Apple comes out with one of these one day. Apple's always late to the party. They'll usually do a good job even if they hold it back from software. But hardware-wise, Apple's got you know amazing hardware. So I'm sure two or three years down the line, they'll have a foldable. And at that point, maybe I'd go back to it. But I end up going with this because it it met all my requirements, gave me a lot of conveniences. I didn't have to give up the iMessage-like setup because I still have that with, um, you go to messages.google.com and it gives you a QR code and you just go into um, your messenger and say, pair it to this device and hit boop. And it now you got it on your computer. Now you got it on your tablet. Now you got it on your MacBook. So I have it in more places than I had with iMessage. So... Very, very cool. Definitely a, a nice setup. So anyway, that's uh, my update for today is uh, the Galaxy Z Flip 4. What a cool, usable, convenient little device. So anyway, if you got thoughts, comments, you know what to do.